Good evening. My name is Arlene Miller, and it's my privilege to welcome you to this edition of Our Town. My guest this evening is Elizabeth Barron, Beth, who yes. is a candidate for the school committee, one of four candidates running for three positions. And as I want to remind everybody, we have a very special uh, and important election on June 13th. It's a Tuesday, June 13th, where we are electing local officials. We'll be electing the selectmen, planning board members, and the big contested race is the school committee race, where there are four candidates running for three positions. That's almost 50% of the school committee will be replaced with new people. In addition, there's a question about the DPW yard to vote yes or no if you support the DPW project as presented to the town meeting in May. Uh, it's been my privilege to be interviewing all of the four candidates this week so we can introduce them to the public so you have a better opportunity to know who to vote for on June 12th, 13th, not 12th, 13th. <laughs> and thank you, Beth, uh, for coming in to, to do this. So what I'd like to do is just generally ask the candidates, who are you, and, sure. and how long have you been in Long Meadow, and why in the world would you want to be on the school committee? <laughs> All loaded questions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, first off, I'd like to start by thanking you for um, presenting us with this forum. I'm sure all the other candidates um, are as grateful as myself to have the ability to reach out to as many of the town members as we can, and also to thank you for your, your own um, public service to the town. That's um, always to be commended. It's, a, okay. it's an admirable cause when we uh, give our time to our community. So thank you for that. Um, as you said, I am Elizabeth Barron. I am a candidate for school committee. I have lived in town almost 13 years now. Um, I have three children in, currently in the Longmeadow Public School System. They are currently leaving eighth grade 10th grade and 11th grade. Wow. So all teenagers. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and I will have all three of them at the high school next year. So uh, I will have a freshman, a junior, and a senior. That's, that's, a, that's a, a, a dinner conversation. <laughs> yeah, that, that might take more than our half hour here. Yeah, but wow. um, they keep me busy, definitely, with sports and, and school. And certainly now we're on the uh, cusp oh, of the college search yeah. experience and uh, all the fun stuff that goes with that. Um, so that's just a little bit um, of my family background. Um, my husband and I moved here. I think oftentimes people ask you, why do you move to Longmeadow? And oftentimes people in our age group, the answer is for the school system. And certainly that played into our own decision. But primarily I moved to Longmeadow for the community. Um, my background, uh, my academic background and my professional background is in historic preservation and town planning. <laughs> Now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing when you laugh like that. But Community um, Preservation Committee, very good. Um, so preservation planning, town planning, um, sense of place and community, that's always at the heart of, of you know, who I am and, and where I come from. Uh, so that certainly played a, a big part in where we chose to, to raise our family. So to live in a historic home? I do not. Uh -oh. okay. I do not. Um, give it 50 more years, maybe, oh. and it, it will maybe on <laughs> the register. Um, no, I don't live in a, in an historic home currently, but I've certainly worked on a, a good deal of historic <laughs> homes um, and all the fun stuff that comes with that. So, as far as Long Meadow goes, just the you know the um, sense of community and the sidewalks and the neighbor neighborly feel, all that. Um, plays into, I think, why I chose to run for school committee. I am passionate not just about the schools, but the town as a whole. Um, I definitely think that serving on the school committee, um, you need to keep your eyes wide open as far as the whole town picture and what's our vision as a community. Um, and I think I can bring that to the table. Uh, that's always at the forefront, forefront of um, issues in town that I'm, that I'm interested in. So the school committee really has come about kind of organically through that, but I would also say um, the real impetus was probably the high school building project. So being on a, a building committee yourself, you know what kind of work goes into that. Um, and it, it is work. Um, so I really applaud anytime somebody in town volunteers or takes on these kinds of projects. Um, it's nice to, to receive the thank you after because it really, it can be 
thankless. You were successful, so that's <laughs> good. It, it, it was successful, and uh, not. What role did you play, weren't you? I um, well, I started the way that came about was I started. Um, I served three years on the center school PTO board, so I remember all too well. Um, January of the year 2010 when we were getting ready to um, put that on the warrant and on the ballot. Um, center school. Sent, I was at center school but the high school project was already in the pipeline right. okay. for the MS. But you don't remember the center school building project. That's not, I thought you were No, 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 not it's that renovation way, yeah. way back in yeah. 99, was, 2000. Well, that wasn't that far along. I, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah, it's almost. That was a whole other saga. Yes. Yeah. Um, which I wasn't living in town for, but yeah. I did hear. Sure. And certainly, you you go when you organize any types of these things. You go and you solicit input from people who have done it in the past, because right. oftentimes you're not reinventing the wheel. You want to see what worked, what was a certain strategy that worked, what didn't work. Sure. So, so now you're talking about the so, high school project. So the high school project, I. Um, was currently on the PTO board, and they were soliciting input from PTO board leadership as far as um, how can we get this project, how can we educate as many of the townspeople as we can about this project outside of the school building committee, which was already doing their own phenomenal work. So Lancer Pride kind of grew out of one of those meetings, and I met with three other women who I really had very little interaction with prior to. And we sat down, and Lancer Pride was actually formed. Uh, I don't even really remember who came up exactly with the name, but once we were given the information, I couldn't have asked really for a better group of women to have worked with because we each brought our own skill set to the table, and we all came into it knowing we're going to work as hard as we can to get this done. There was no um, struggle or nobody, no power positioning kind of thing. Everybody really was coming together for the greater good. Yeah. And it, it was a beautiful um, you know, process. And it, it led to some great friendships and some wonderful um, interactions with townspeople that are really memorable for me. And that all um, resulted in a positive vote, obviously. And yeah, we have very positive. A, a, you know, this building that we're in right now. Um, which I love. I absolutely love to see the kids in here. I love to see the things that they're doing, the art shows, the music, how they're utilizing the space. Um, and I'm always such a fan of being a good steward of the building. So anytime I come in for my own kids' programs, yeah. you better believe it. I'm checking, checking out. Checking out, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, were you on the, so you were on the Lancer Pride group. You weren't on the building committee. No, I was yeah. not on the building okay. committee. So you're the Lancer Pride group was more of a political action mm -hmm. committee. So sure. it was really Pack. packed mm -hmm. to get out and um, educate people and uh, promote a yes vote mm -hmm. in town. So, you did a good job. That's so for sure. it was a, it was a, a, we had a great team, and it was definitely a good grassroots effort, and it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but we all went into it knowing that, you know, personally for me, I, I don't undertake anything unless I'm going to be thorough, and diligent, and passionate about it. So right away, I was get me the feasibility study get me um, the MSBA meeting minutes, like let me find out what's going on. And then I reached out to other successful building campaigns across the state. So Natick, communities like that, mm -hmm. I solicited advice from people and said, what worked for you guys, what didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it was technically running a campaign, which sure. oh, I guess wow. is what I'm doing again. <laughs> Absolutely. So why the school committee? Um, I'm just so passionate about the kids in this town mm -hmm. and the awesome things that I see them doing every day. Like as going to Europe to sing in <laughs> Venice? Yeah, our lyrics group. I mean, they're phenomenal. Wow. Phenomenal. Yeah. But just, um, I think substitute teaching has really brought that. that, that, that in your day job. <laughs> my day job, yeah. My day job. Um, I've been a substitute teacher in town, I think, almost seven or eight years. Wow. Um, That's got to be the hardest job. It is hard in in the respect that you're filling in for a teacher who has a very specific agenda and curriculum and the way she runs her day and you don't have as personal a connection with these kids yeah. so you don't know but really do you do like what to a certain grade or do you do everything i do everything but i really found after the first couple of years i really um kind of pushed it back to like K through five. Uh -huh. I love that the younger. it's just that age of discovery Less and watching hormones. them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah middle school. Yeah. And then once my kids moved in, on in the system, I didn't want to be in the in the um, building that they were in, yeah. especially middle school. Like that's a whole other dynamic. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want to be a part of 
what was going on in the in the classroom there and it, you know they're finding their own way as sure. people they don't want their mom in the building right. and you know hovering over them so um, so you so you've learned about long meadow school system from the ground up yes really from the ground up and seeing what the teachers are implementing and the curriculum the changes that have come about through the years but just I get amazed every day at the cutting edge things that teachers are developing in the classroom and it's it's always that light bulb moment where you are with a, a child and they get it and they're they're happy about it. Mm -hmm. So I, I it sounds so cheesy but I had said to the school principal it was a couple of months ago I think I was working and I had gone in and I read this amazing really emotional writing piece from a 10-year-old boy which you don't oftentimes mm -hmm see this kind of quality work from from a 10 year old fifth grade boy and I had to edit teacher edit his writing and I, I won't give away the story or give away his identity but I was so moved by what this boy had written about his dad and I teared up a little bit reading it and I just in that moment I just reached out to him and said you have a gift yeah don't ever stop writing you yeah. have a gift and I went home went pa passed in my badge later that day and the uh, principal and the secretary had said, oh, how was your day in fifth grade? Because they're getting ready to move on to junior high sure. and they can, you know, they're ready to, to, to flee the building at that point. And I said, you know what, as cheesy as it sounds, sometimes I come into this job every day and I think, you know, I have the potential to change a child's life. Yeah. And I said, today, a kid changed mine. Yeah. Like, it's he cool. changed me. It was, it was cool. It, yeah. it just gave me, they give me a lot of hope for for the future, really. Yeah. They do. <laughs> you know, it, it's all on them, really, when you think about it. And when you see kids doing amazing things and displaying, like, good citizenship and, and being, you know, strong character and making good choices, it's it's a positive that's, thing. That's, that is a good thing. So, so Can't why, be cynical. Do you want to, why do you want to be in the school committee? <laughs> so the school committee, I feel like, is a natural progression for me in that direction. And then I think when you when you look outside your own little bubble or your town and you look at the political landscape on the national level and you think, you know, there might be some interesting things coming down the pike, at, you know, as far as directed from the federal level down to the state. So how is that going to affect us mm -hmm. in Longmeadow? Um, so just the, the national issues that are going on, but also oftentimes the school committee is not always a controversial, you know, kind of ship is sailing itself a little bit and you're negotiating the budget and you don't you don't always in the thick of things but we do have the middle school statement of interest that has been submitted there are some big issues coming you know forward so I thought I do bring an interesting skill set to this I bring dedication I bring leadership and I was asked literally I think for three years in a row after I did the high school campaign to run, run for school committee yeah. run for school and it just it wasn't the right time for my family to be honest. It's, it's a huge commitment. It's a huge commitment. Yeah. And it, you know, I'm not afraid of the work. Um, I don't shy away from the workload, but it is important. It's valuable. I think um, in our state, we are leaders as far as um, public education goes, uh, public education reform. Those are all things that are, um, you know, Massachusetts is known for. So to be a part of that dynamic and to um, represent the people of Longmeadow when you're talking about the kids in Longmeadow um, and you're on the school committee, you're really talking about two things that are very precious to people, their children and their money. Sure. So it's speaking important. Of, speaking of the money, so if there's a, uh, you have a big part of the budget, the school committee. Yeah, I think it's close to 53%. If you don't include benefits. Yes. 76-ish. Yes. 73, maybe 76, if you include the benefits. So it's a big part of the, bu the, the, the budget. And Correct. You'll be faced with often ten times tensions with the select board and other demands in the town. How mm -hmm. do you view that? Well, I think it's important, and I think as a community we are reaching more towards a balance where we're starting to develop relationships across the boards, which I think is so key and so critical. It comes and goes, by the way. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's coming. It, it's coming. It's, 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 it's been, been a good there. Place. It's, 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 it's in a good, good bad. It's been yeah, good. Yeah, it's, it's cyclical. Good. It's I bad. feel yeah. like, you know, peaks and valleys. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think those relationships are, are critical as far as um, when you're working within, especially in our town where we're faced with such a, um, the school takes a large chunk of the budget, but we're really um, driven by our property taxes. You know very well we don't have land to build out. We're always at this juncture where we're kind of caught with 
we don't receive tons of federal state money. Right. We're, of we're not a Chicopee, we're not a Springfield, we're not Holyoke. Right. Um, so a lot of those things we have to be looking at our, our budget and spending money wisely. I think whether you live in a large home in town or a small home in town, people want their money spent wisely. And I think reaching out to the boards and really having these dialogues about what's important, even opening it up to the community, maybe holding forums and asking people, what do you value? What are you, what are you looking for Long Meadow to be in the next five years, in the next 10 years? Mm -hmm. um, there always, I think, has to be those discussions because otherwise it, it turns into a warfare. War of us versus them. But so you're not saying, um, I didn't hear you say, my job is to fight for the schools. And yes, my job is to fight for the schools and for the kids. Uh, ultimately, the kids is the is is what you're fighting for. When you're, we're talking about the school committee, my job is to advocate for our youngest residents who have no no say. They have no vote. Right. So my job is to make sure that money is spent equitably, so that the largest proportion of students in our town are, are ben they're all succeeding, they're mm -hmm. thriving. Uh, we're not leaving anybody so behind. What you're not saying is schools over everything else. No, absolutely not. That's, I just want to clarify. No, no. Some, sometimes it's, it's that, no. there's a feeling of that. No, and I, I do think that has been part of our history, but I, I am encouraged. I think that I've reached out to select board members already. I'm, I'm just a candidate. I'm not even on the school committee yet, but I think it's important to start building those relationships. I've been talking with people at the Council on Aging and different groups in town to be because we have to have those successful conversations with each other. So no, I definitely don't feel all for the schools. Um, obviously support the schools, yes. Oh no, sure. <laughs> but um, we have to- I mean, we think 76% of the budget is sort is, of an indication that we support the schools. Yes, absolutely we do. And I don't think there's ever an issue, I've rarely been at a town meeting in the last few years where there's been contention over the school budget. It's always passed, there's maybe four or five hands that go up as a no, right. so I think for the most part, and anytime I talk to people in town, of course, we're all public stakeholders in education. Everybody values, um, especially you know, Long Meadows education mm -hmm. system. We are pretty good producing some really amazing, amazing kids out there. So I think there's not a question of whether people support the schools. It's a question of how can we balance everything fairly. What about? Um, as, do you have any particular? issue that's on your plate in the schools? Or? I do. I, I'm actually passionate about so many things that it might take too long to discuss. I'm talking about in the schools. <laughs> but in the schools, yeah. specifically, yes, I do have a long list of things that I feel are, are important. We and have a couple. special education, definitely, at the forefront. Do you don't think we do a good job? I think we do a good job. I think we can do a better job. Really? I think that the big way- It's part of the budget now. It's a big part of the budget. A lot of it is out of your control as far as what's mandated right. by you know the state and the federal, at the federal level. But I think that as far as special education goes, we have to be really aware of how we're delivering these services, especially um, to kids who are just coming into our system. Are we properly diagnosing? Are we properly giving the, the correct curriculum to them? Because I think what happens is sometimes we, we aren't doing that and some kids are falling through the cracks and then you have parents coming in who are disagreeing with how their children are receiving their education. Now you're bringing in legal costs. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of the budget sure. that I feel like, why are we spending so much money on legal costs? That money should go right to the kids. Um, in the classrooms. So if we're not servicing the kids properly from the get-go. Is it a problem that some people think my kid, my kid ought to have special ed and maybe they don't fall into that group? That's certainly some of it. of it. I think there's some, there's some so of that. Fight that. There's fighting of that, but there's also, I think, missed um, opportunities yeah, to make sure that you, so I think it just trickles down. So now once you have a kid who's not receiving the proper services, then legal fees are at, and then maybe you're talking about an out of district placement which mm -hmm. now your, your money is up, 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 up. So I think in terms of ways that we can be cognizant of, of that and, and try to keep an eye on, what can we do to kind of control that at the, at the entry level so it doesn't escalate to such a, a big money problem? Mm -hmm.
um, that to me could be money saved and be good. and used elsewhere. Which mm -hmm. we, so special education, I'm definitely passionate about it. I do have um, a child who is dyslexic, so th that falls under special education. So how we deliver um, services to kids in terms of their different um, diagnosis. Um, I think the social and emotional health of our kids is so equally important to me. Um, in addition to their academic sure. performance, I think it just goes hand in hand. Are, are what, they can we, what can we do differently? I don't think we have to really do anything differently. I think we have some awesome, wonderful resources in place. Um, but how do we build out that curriculum? How do we keep it going in, in terms of how our environment is changing? I think I just read yesterday an article in the New York Times that opioid-related deaths are, I think, for the age, I don't want to misquote the paper, but um, under the age of 50, that's the leading cause of death. Mm -hmm. So we have Shelley Warren, who's the substance abuse counselor at the high school. She is doing a phenomenal job. They just received a, a grant from the assistant district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. So those are wonderful things that are going on um, in our own school system. But how are we building that out to make sure that we're because big problem. it's such a big problem, and I think a even lot of our meadow. even yes, we're not immune. We are not immune to those types of issues. Right. But those that type of programming or curriculum is very important to me. So seeing that that's um, interesting, that's carried through and built out. Um, I'm I'm definitely concerned about that. The budget, um, we talked about that briefly. Um, what are the what was the other item that I was. You didn't mention the middle school. The statement of interest. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I didn't. I'm, I mentioned I'm not trying it to feed earlier. You. No, no, you're right. We talked about it earlier. No. Um, I'm interested in, in seeing how we can constructively deal with that situation mm -hmm. since it's really in its infancy. You know, the statement of interest gets submitted, and that isn't uh, a guarantee in saying, here we have a proposal. That's saying, Massachusetts, show us that we have the need, and then they determine. They come back and say, okay, these are the possible solutions. What would you guys say if they came back and said you didn't have a need? Um, you, your hands are tied at that point. That oh. You know, you don't receive their money. You if, go back and don't clean the floors? or What, <laughs> do, you, what do you do? <laughs> no, I think that um, we definitely have to address both of those buildings. Are I mean, I know that Williams is considerably in, in more dire straits than Glenbrook. I believe it is older. But is. I think we have to be looking at, we're looking at two parcels of land, two middle schools. So I think the ongoing conversations that are happening, I hear a lot of um, one school versus two schools. So given our constraints in town as far as our, our land resources, I think we're looking at Glenbrook I think it sits on about 21 acres, and Williams, I think, is around 16, 16 and a half. So let's start looking at our enrollment projections. Do we have a need? Do we well, need? They, no, they have we been. have to do all of that are. research. And Mass State Building Authority will come back and do oh, all of that, that, too, and they'll tell you. Um, you, you don't, you yeah. don't. It's going to be no, an in, interesting time in the community when that, that conversation becomes it, it comes to a different level once you hear back from the school with the people in Boston about the level of, of need. It will. It will. Be it very absolutely. interesting because that, that will affect, that will have a ripple effect of, to many other issues in town. It will because I think we're caught in, in a cycle now where a lot of our infrastructure is aging out. So how do we deal with all of these demands are, are, are huge right but and you, we it, don't if you go to one school you open up a big piece of property what do we do with that do we just sell it do we use it for a town resource um, you're right other, I mean it's, it's, it's going to be difficult but opportunity a real opportunity you're right difficult but difficult conversations need to be had yeah. sometimes to to make change and to move forward so I don't I certainly don't shy away from that being part of the school committee. I'm really looking forward to collaborating with different boards and just fostering more of like a relationship with parents and students and teachers and really I feel like when people all come together for the greater good, you really can't lose with that. It's good good philosophy. So, I'm I'm hoping, you know, I, I'm hoping that that I can be a facilitator of that or encourage that. That's what I believe anyway personally. So, so how do you do with the uh, tension and well, nitty gritty stuff. <laughs> yeah, you and that's 
the nature of the beast. You can't avoid that, mm -hmm. nor would I want to. Um, I dealt with a lot of that on the on the high school campaign because you never you have to, and especially on the PTO as well, you have to go in with the mindset that you're never going to please everyone 100 percent of the time. That's okay. just absolutely not going to happen. But how um, you can collaborate in a meaningful way. So how can you take the time to actually listen to what the other party is saying and um, what do they bring to the table and where are they coming, what place are they coming from? Is it a, a place of, of knowledge or anger or, you know? Both, you sometimes. know, or is, it, is it that, <laughs> yeah. you know, based in fact, are we based in emotion here? Like how, how to constructively deal with that? So um, you, you'll have that. So do you, have, do you think the DPW project is, uh, affects your school project? I don't know. Or do you think the I, school project is going to affect the vote of the DPW? I don't know because I think a lot of times there's not enough information or a not enough good information given when you're looking at building projects. So I think you can't look at the town's building needs without looking at our debt exclusion. And, and I think people need to understand, yes, you can build, but this is what we're bonded for, but this is coming off in a certain year. Right. Like you have to look right. at- it's, um, it's not all happening at once. Right, it's, it's not all, it's spread out. I, I by think design. It, yes, and absolutely you have to consider that you're, you can't present it as people's is uh, community residents taxes just increasing 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 you have to realize the projects that are coming off of that like the center school and, and blueberry renovations right. i think those are all coming off in 2020 um right or, they're about a 20-year bond yeah, i believe exactly. for those so you're always in in flux with that so um the dpw project the the um, adult center possibly renovating or however these things are have to be talked about they're not mutually exclusive so we have to be having a conversation about, as far as capital improvement, what do we want to see as a, as a whole in our town? Mm -hmm. And to realize the spacing. Like when I say a statement of interest is submitted for the middle schools, you're talking maybe a six to seven year right. span of time before a shovel would even, even hit the ground for that. It, it, I think people need to understand that process. And, right. and, and I don't think that, I think that's not clear. Right. Just, just like I don't think it's clear people have to vote on the DPW on June 13th. <laughs> You're right. So uh, it's important that that is uh, the only question, you know, on the ballot for them right now, other than the candidate race. That's, that's, right. that's the, the one question. So a lot of people, I think, don't understand the workings of town meeting either. Once you approve money for a feasibility study or you approve to even put something on the ballot, right. it doesn't end there. Right. It's so got to go. It's got to go the distance. You've got to come out and vote. <laughs> sure. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Which, so um, we have to wrap. But anything that I didn't ask you that you want to talk about that? Oh my gosh, I feel like we covered so much. No, you did great. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, you know, I never know. If somebody's hiding back and say, Oh yeah, I really wanted to put, no, put I, a push for that. Or I think I talked about things that are passionate for me. I, I think I, I'm trying to let people know anyway that. I bring a really critical eye to things when I do take on, um, whether it be a board position or an actual professional job or um, a committee, anything like that. So I, I appreciate um, people exploring the different candidate options. I think that when we're, we're educated about a topic, a candidate, um, anything like that, you can't go wrong because you've educated yourself, you've got all the knowledge out there. So a forum like this where you've allowed us to come and speak, I think is wonderful. Um, so hopefully we've, we've reached some voters and- Get some people out to vote. Get some, yeah, it's so important. It is so critically important um, to come out and vote, not just June 13th, but every time we have, it town affects meeting. everybody in town. Town, yep. town yep. meeting, um, right. this is how your money is spent. This is, um, a lot of people will say, oh, you live in Long Meadow, they do things the old fashioned way with town meeting. I love town meeting. Um, it, you know, everything has its, its pros and cons, obviously, yep. but it is, it's important. So I would encourage people to come out and vote June 13th. Um, I hope that they'd find me a worthy candidate. I'm excited to get going. I would love to serve on the school committee. I think I bring a lot um, to the town. So I'm looking to serve all the kids and uh, get some really great work done to, to take the Long Meadow Public Schools well, into the next few years. Name is Elizabeth Barron. Correct. Running or Beth, but <laughs> on, the, or. on the ballot it probably says Elizabeth. It does. It yes, does. it Elizabeth does. Barron. 
uh, running for one of the four candidates running for school committee, you may vote for three, keep in mind. So what's the date? The date is June 13th. Everybody mark your calendar. You can vote by absentee ballot today or tomorrow, and you can vote at the community house from 8 to 8 on June 13th. You vote for a selectman, a planning board person, three out of four candidates for the school committee, and yes or no for the DPW project as presented. And I want to thank, thank Beth for taking the time on, on very short notice. No, thank you. To, to come to, to do this interview, and I want to thank uh, each of you who took the time to listen, and please do vote on June 13th. Thank you, and good night.